Come on, Carly. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And that is our special guest on today's podcast, Carlito. What's up, baby? What's going on? We are back home. We are back in Skylux. We are big shout out to Mark and Skylux Roofing. And if you're not following them, and I don't know what's wrong with you if you're not following them, man. By the way, here here's an amazing company that believes in changing the industry and cares. That's the basically what, and they do great roofing, great cladding, unbelievable, great great ACM, great everything. Thanks, Mark, again for uh, the home away from home. Our special guest to the left of me, to the left of me. And to the, the right, right of, me. of you, <laughs> you do the honors, Carlito. This is my boy, Matt. Is it Matthew or is it Matt for it's, official? It's whatever you want it to be. What do you want Hello, it to Bob. be? Hello, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> it's Matt. It's Matt. Pleasure to be here, guys. So he's from MMC Tile. That's the handle, no? That's the handle. That's the handle. What's the website? MMC Tiles. MM- <laughs> MMC Tiles. What's the second M for? It's Mark, my middle name. And what's the oh. C for? Chicone. Chicone. Name. All right. Yeah. So you're Irish. All right. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Construction Life Podcast. Thank you so much for being uh, with us. What? What? I just saw the Irish man, and he was Irish <laughs> Italian. <laughs> man. <laughs> man. <laughs> okay, so Matt, tell us a lot about yourself. How long you've been in the business? What do you do? How do you do it? What don't you like about it? What you hate about us? All kinds of shit. Like, oh, let's just talk. Let's just guys. talk, on, man. Let's get <laughs> I mean, the journey really started 10 years ago out of college. I figured out I hated it, needed to do something with my hands. My ZO was in the Union, 183, and he kind of just threw me into tiling, put me in high-rise commercial. My first day was kind of weird. I walked into the building, 40 guys sitting in the room. I don't know, man. I felt like I was in a prison. I walked in the front doors. There was a couple trades fighting. Fighting? Literally fighting? fighting? Literally fighting. These guys were literally scrapping each other at the bottom floor of the building. What was the reason? Did you find oh, out? I don't even remember. I just remember putting my <laughs> head down, getting on that elevator, and going upstairs to meet my foreman. That's it. Okay, so that's your that's your introductory that's my introductory that's where it all started i man. never knew you were in the union <laughs> yeah i started off in the union why didn't i know that 183 wow you no longer with the union no longer with the union. how long did you stay with the union so i was there for about two years uh high rise hated it absolutely hated what were you it. doing there you were tiling there started off where everybody started i mean i started cleaning garbage off the floors then i started grouting they slowly let me do more and more tile yeah after that it was one washroom at a time throughout the building that's a lot of washrooms man high rise oh man it was brutal it was like an assembly line how many are there in a typical high rise I, I heard it's like generally 200 units is it 200 units yeah. per high rise there's usually 10 units. per floor right 10 units yeah per this floor. was a smaller building i think there were 50 units yeah, so that's they, 50 plus bathrooms because some units have two 50 bathrooms plus, yeah exactly most of them had two one powder one one master and of course it was lots of mosaics and lots of marble no, and no, lots no, of no, po- no 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 <laughs> 12 by 12 ceramic go 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 12 go, by go. 12 ceramic glued straight to the floor oh, glued, glued man. straight to the floor nothing said glue no glue everything was mastic wow wow mastic. It was everything was mastic mastic you is that no even idea. minimum code wow no. these guys didn't wow. care. everything was mastic 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 on the walls in the shower mastic on the floors yeah i know in the shower oh, i never man. heard that on the floor mastic straight to concrete oh baby. man <laughs> back in the day that would have been a great instagram picture of the crane bringing in all the mastic. oh yeah just like what everybody else is doing now <laughs> but before we get too far ahead yeah how did you did you like the pay in the union like, honestly everything Everything about it was terrible. It was nothing good. Awesome. Nothing good was about it. I hated. I hated being there. I hated the trade. How about the benefits and pension? Benefits and pension, not that good. I mean, wow. I was I was walking away with seven hundred dollars a week. Working how many hours a week? 40, 50 hours. How long ago was this? This was 10, 10 years ago. 700 a week? 700 a week. Started breaking your ass, breaking, breaking your back, my ass, breaking your knees. Yeah. Cleaning the garbage off the floors, everything. Everything you can imagine. Well, I still do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you choose to. Wow, or painful. other people's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. That's tile work. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So after two years? Two years, yeah. I left there and then I went straight to subdivision, which was an also. Uh, union? That, I was trying to think. Is that a lateral move? Honestly, it's comparable. Very comparable to each other. I mean, high-rise and subdivision homes, you get the same kind of quality, right? 
don't these guys me, don't care. They just want to get in and out as fast as they can. Chicken wire, right? Chicken wire, everything. Oh yeah, it has to be. God. This is trauma, man. Yeah, this is this is base. I mean, I don't know if you agree, but the only thing I think chicken wire should be for is like sand beds or chicken? A self leveler. <laughs> yeah, or chicken. Yeah, he's got it. I mean, chicken chicken mesh, chicken wire different, shouldn't be used on anything. Guys. Different kind of anything. chicken wire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how many years were you in subdivision? I was in subdivision for another year. One wow. more year. So you had year. three hard knock years, man. Terrible. Terrible years. How much work did you have to get done every day? So I got based off the high rise was paid by hour. I mean, That's hours not did, bad. Not bad. And then as soon as you got the subdivision, it was all piece work. So they square were paying footage. you two dollars a square foot. Oh two my a square. God. Two dollars. They so would deliver. nine years ago, two a square. I would go to the warehouse in the morning. They would load up my truck with a skid of material. Doesn't matter what material that I was using. Whatever they wanted me to use, I used it. And then I head to the site. Whatever I produce is what I got paid. Was it mastic? No. So? No. But what was it? Go on. The, uh, the shower, we don't know the building. The shower so. walls were still mastic. Speaking of showers, what were the shower trays or the floors? It was standard. It was just a rubber, rubber membrane. Rubber membrane. Rubber I membrane. Hate that's it. it. Stapled with Staple. weeples. Yeah, that's it. Screws. Right drywall behind, screws. Right behind Fuck. regular drywall. I'm going to be depressed, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we haven't even started yet. I can't this wait to get Sunday into this. This is Sunday morning, with man. Yeah, I'm like, man. this is depression, man. You guys don't know. Don't know what's going on over That's there. That's why he started it's, with Wall Street. I dun, hate dun. subdivision. <laughs> 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 so you're in subdivision. Yeah. Man, just picking up material and I'm using, I'm assuming you're, what are you using to hear it? It was actually all custom blend from. Was it really? Custom, yeah. Nothing on the floor, directly onto plywood? No, it just that was scratch. That was scratch as just well. Just scratch. Right? Yeah. They prepped wow. you. You no, just laid we tile. had the prep. Oh, okay. So that was so included you, in the $2 a square foot. What? Yeah. $2. I'm still stuck at two. So basically $2. at that time, nine years ago, the guy at McDonald's is making more money than Correct. him. Correct. The guy 100%. at McDonald's is making more money than him. 100%. Well, I'm wondering when I'm going into these new homes, why they're done the way they are. It $2 starts a square from the builder. Foot. Why don't we backtrack it then? So if you're taking two, what is it being sold for? It's not being sold for two. No, I mean, these guys are definitely getting away with at least six, seven. So, so they're, they're probably, taking the bulk of the money yeah. and you're doing the bulk of the work. Yeah. Dun, wow. dun, 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 dun. Um, we're not surprised to be okay, honest. so can we're i ask surprised. you would you be completing a whole house in one day to make some money well they would expect you to complete it within three days and that's maybe eight, grouted late eight, so three bathrooms scratchy. powder room laundry room it's, it's, it was typically two bathrooms on the top floor a powder room that's it and then obviously the kitchen the, the foyer. front foyer the kitchen yeah. laundry yeah so and you want that done in three days? Three days. Wow, dude, you're That's a soldier. Scary. You know, all this time, and I never knew this. We've been having so much fun, I never got into the, getting to know you even more. This is yeah. fantastic, yeah. man. It was rough. So was you've done the rough. union thing. You've done the, the developers. Yep. But where did it go from there? It came to a point where I said, enough is enough. I mean, I'm not making enough money for myself. I just hated the type of work that was being done. So I knew that I had to go on my own and start doing some, obviously, more, more yeah. detailed kind of work. At this time, were you already aware of better? Or products or anything like were you no, doing side was, jobs was, for yourself i was completely oblivious to everything i didn't wow. have i didn't have so you're how anymore. old are you so you're uh, i'm 30 you're 30 at that time no no i'm 30 now at that time i was about 20 22 22 and you're, you're deciding to go on your own yeah you've already seen three years of tile hell yeah from two of the worst environments yeah <laughs> and now you want to <laughs> get the worst it, possible you want to get on, go on your own now yeah and you're 22 years old and you want to start your own business yeah and this is where... How this, the fuck did that feel? This is where it got really rough for me. I mean, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything better than what I was taught from these two environments. Stepping out into a, a world where I wanted to be into that custom environment, where I wanted to produce quality, quality work and be proud of actually what I, what I was doing was actually really hard for me i basically started testing testing on site and on site i mean this sounds really bad so what did you do what kind of tests i tried to figure out my own ways of installing the proper ways of installing and i would actually practice on homes i was getting you know what i was there so, too honestly we all start somewhere yeah we 100%. always do that job for the first time so what were some of the first tests this is so this is yeah, nine no. years ago eight nine years ago eight nine years ago so you still had youtube accessibility so you that can you was, can kind of look at was what's it going youtube on. back then still no yeah, yeah, YouTube is around. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to still figure out what dinosaur you are from the crustacean. I'm period. right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, YouTube I'm was around nine years ago, man. <laughs> uh, 
I was, I was fortunate. I mean, I have family in the building industry that they uh, they actually build. So they gave me a few custom homes to start on. It was good. It was rough. I didn't do anywhere close to a perfect job. I can tell you that. Of course, you're learning. But I you felt learning. good. I felt good doing my own work. But I was actually surprised on how long detailed work actually take. Wow. So how did you bill it? I was billing it according to what I was charging at the subdivision homes. Ouch. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was in a very bad spot, man. So very it was taking spot. you, obviously, five times longer, if not more. If not more. Costing you easily twice as much for material. I wasn't making any money. You weren't making any money. No money. But you were learning, though. I was learning, which, honestly, I wouldn't have trade for the world. I wouldn't change That's well, anything. <laughs> Dude, you've come a long yeah. way. <laughs> no, I honestly, I wouldn't change anything differently. So how many years after the fact that you started, did you have a like a eureka moment and, and realize, okay, I need to kind of step up my game. I got to figure out my business a lot better. I got to figure out what I'm worth. It was about two years after that. Two it years, really, eh? It really kicked me in the face, yeah. But what, by that what two What kicked year, you in the face? Was the business or the money? No, the money. Like I was making a, I was making good money at that two-year point after, but it was just really the, the mindset on how to get things done properly, more efficiently. Always on your own? Never well, a helper? Yeah, no, Man, you beginning. tall guys are all lone wolf. Say. Lone wolves. Yeah. Lone wolves. I mean, tiles heavy. Goes, Bags are heavy. By the time it takes your helper to bring you a tile or mix you a bag, you could have just done it yourself. You know what I mean? Instead of saving that two, three hundred dollars a day that you're paying them. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> get, get to our age and you, you might want to reevaluate I'm, I'm that. I'm still young, so I still got it in me. Exactly, I still right. Got it in me. But yeah. you want to be an older guy still tiling, or an older guy running a tile shop. 100. Yeah. percent Now you're getting into the groove. And then when did MMC actually officially start? Started about six years ago. Six years ago. Uh, yeah, six years ago. And it really started based off Instagram. Which you did amazing at. Yeah, I mean, Instagram. It's a whole other story we'll talk about, though. Yeah, yeah. And that really hit home. I was in the groove. I started doing my own things. started getting better at it. And then, in turn, I started charging more money for it, which is really where it all started. Where did you start changing or developing your company more? Like using underlayments, proper waterproofing, proper self-levelers. When did you start this and how, why, and how did it start changing? So for me, it really started based off of what I was watching other people do. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of testing of products as well. Honestly, mainly Instagram, man. Wow. Mainly Instagram. What were you reading? I was on the internet a lot, looking at different products. Techniques use, and stuff. Techniques, yeah. different materials to use on the floors. Did you start getting some loyalty to a particular brand or anything like that? Or were I you... had I had loyalty to some companies, but it was, I mean, more on the clip. Got it. It wasn't like the actual material. It wasn't from Schluter. It wasn't from Custom. It wasn't from Tech. We just learned the other day, and I didn't know this, and I was surprised I didn't know this, that Mepe actually made a clip-friendly. Yeah, see, I don't even know that. I, didn't know I that. just found that out at the show. Yeah. I, and it's been out a year. It's smart for them to do it. Yeah, I was like, well, because everybody, I guess, is doing clips, right? Such a smart business. So what's your choice of clips? Oh, you don't want to say it? No, no, that's, that's fine. It's good. Pagrin, to me, honestly, probably the best clip company. Perfect Level Master, they're amazing too. Well, I want to get into this. The only thing that differentiates the two is the person that's operating it. Tom, Perfect Level, amazing guy. You ever need anything, he's yeah, there Tom's for you. Tom's wicked. Yeah, he's amazing. If you need something, you're really stuck, he'll deliver the clips customer himself. service yeah he'll deliver the clips yeah. to himself to your door he's really taking his family business to another level what's the dad do again well dad's kind of like the traveler engineer oh, reinventor you know, that, that tiling company right pole master the tile stall is called pole masters oh, right okay yeah. okay okay uh, his dad reinvented already invented before he just bettered it with a better product in it yeah he made it more stiff were you always taught based on the clip system or were you doing freehand no in the beginning? I, I started freehand the, this clip system was all new to me i, I can't well. picture high rise and subdivision no. using clips. <laughs> they didn't use I spacers <laughs> they didn't even use they spacers they freaking spacers. cut up cardboard and then they just stuck oh, it i've in seen the, that before well, it. honestly at two bucks you can't afford to do anything no you can't afford to buy good thin set no. you can't afford to buy good grout no. you can't afford you can't, to buy mcdonald's you can't afford to, to relax no. you gotta go 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 no back buttering just throw it fucking down get it done that's it that's how they're all but done. that's how the industry is wow but back to that i mean you have these guys that are working in crews of eight that are tackling on like four or five houses at a time finishing them within a day and a half wow yeah they're making money how i don't know that's a good question. I mean, and that two dollars got to be what? Uh, maybe four dollars now. Nine years later, four no. bucks. I can't even see it going more than that. I don't understand how they're making money. I don't know if I can cut you off for a little bit. 
I started tiling like 30 years ago. I couldn't find a tile setter to do my jobs because I was under coding myself because at that time, I was trying to buy tools instead of actually making money because I already had another job. So like my tile work was like my side job and I was trying to build, you know, an arsenal of tools, get the van going, you know, get the business going, learn it like anyone else. You learn the hard way and we all do things differently. I never did clips either, but I did use spacers. Yeah. It took me forever, but getting back to spacers, I also like pay grant perfect level was my favorite for a long time but i only use perfect level for like i still use perfect level for really hard jobs like if i'm doing big slabs like 10 by 3 or 10 by yeah. 4 slabs i'll use perfect level because it pulls it together with pay grant, i find it's a little bit more flexible it's stiff but when you break it off it's cleaner than perfect level yeah this that, is just my opinion that is the only thing that differentiates yeah. the two of them is that the leg of the pagrin clip will always break cleanly in the joint, even if there's a buttload of cement in it. But perfect level will pull it together better. Perfect level. I feel like their pull is both the same. The only thing, like I said, is perfect level you have to stay really, really, really clean with. You can't have anything who's set on it. Who's the anything. original? Honestly, I first saw it from perfect level. No, there was I another. Thought, I thought it, there was another. Ramaldi was the one that yeah, had, they had it originally came up with first. That's right. Ramondi had it first. Yeah, I think yeah so. okay. That's what that's I thought. Right. Ramondi and then basically perfect level reinvented. And I think they used a different kind of silica, okay. which was more rigid. I mean, I like them. I like the clips, right? So I'm not loyal to any one particular one but I do like them. And I, I know the old school guys are just, they don't like them. They well, don't yeah. use them. They don't want to use them. I'm that old so school yeah. guy. I never believed in clips. I thought it was for amateurs. It took me a little while to get used to it. Then I started meeting people like yourself yeah. and other guys. And they're like, oh no, you got to try this, man. And I started using it. But, and but always ends with bullshit. I found that if you didn't prep your floor properly with your thin set, you could actually didn't pull matter. up the tile too far and wow. leave a hole a underneath. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this is actually the best and the worst creation to yeah, get introduced right. into tile. You're having drywall guys, you're having framers, you're having concrete guys all starting to do tiles now because of these clips. But what they're really? doing, yeah, I never. And knew I that. mean, honestly, with this clip system, anybody can make wow. almost anybody. Almost can. anybody can make a surface look clean. A lip-free surface with tile, surface-wise. But when you look underneath, obviously everything. Well, that's I, where that's where the disaster starts that's to right. happen. You because get if hollow. you're actually using these clips to pull and push tiles, you're creating hollow spots. Yeah, you still have to use your feel to get that tile to build yeah. up. Yeah, that that tile has to be basically perfect before you put that clip in. That's right. Yeah. If you're doing a lot of pulling, that you tile still have is to back hollow. butter. Yeah. 100%. I also, just before we get too far ahead, because we're right now, we're at leveling. I keep telling people that it's more important to level with self-leveler than with thin set. Because oh, then it's only designed to well, go have, so thick. They have a more maximum height than a thin set. Yeah. What, typically, a thin set would hold up to three quarter. Listen, we've both typically, seen, we've seen, bo we've yeah, both we've seen, seen guys butter the back yeah. of tiles and... You yeah. know, there's an inch, inch and a half of yeah, thin set that, in there. That, that's uh, why it's above. called thin set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we already talked about this, yeah. man. I never. That's, that's the one thing I learned. I think I, when I did the first looter course, and they showed me a piece of marble and it had like an inch of thin set on it. Yeah. And then they were asked. They were like going in as an inquiry, and they were the client i think was asking why did this tile break and it had a lot to do with the, the amount of thickness of, of thin set yeah. underneath yeah, it course. wasn't properly bedded and we all know that everything is all based on a foundation 100 percent. so if That's your right. foundation on your tiling you can have the most beautiful tile strongest tile whatever it's still going to fail 100 there's a chance that it's going to fail yeah. well how about this so you put a Schluter membrane down because I'm a Schluter guy. Plug after plug yeah. after plug. So I put. I'm not sure if like the breakers are gonna <laughs> hold it. <laughs> so I put Schluter down. I don't put any self leveler down. But then I put an inch over top of that. How is that subfloor going to work properly? Is that what you it's do? It's not. No, I'm not saying that's what I do. <laughs> I, this is what I've seen when I've removed work. I've seen this built up like that, and I'm like, that Dietra is supposed to be right up at the top, not at the bottom. Yeah, like well, that's why they require down. all their buildups to happen under their mats. So yeah. whatever buildups or it can float over yeah, it. Yeah. Another thing with these clips, though, that nobody talks about is when I used to do the clips and I'd be cleaning the tile. This is before grout release and everything else. I'd be popping these off i would notice sometimes i would either etch or scratch where those clips went into yeah so especially if you're like reusing your wedges when you have like a little bit of concrete on them when you're pushing that 
through your tile that concrete scratching your tile as yeah, well that's right i mean yeah. even if you had a polished tile and the wedge is completely clean that wedge can still possibly create a nice mark on your oh, tile yeah. no because of the force for, yeah, sure, for sure a nice yeah. mark and but you that's can't, why they came out with those those little yeah i use those from ramondi i buy them from yeah. mondi and then i use them with like other systems you use what sorry use what it's they, a disc like a washer a disc. yeah it's a protective cap so it actually fits over the clip it's a protective oh so that's the reason piece. for it yeah, yeah so so you put the clip in then you put the washer on which is got like it. less than a 16th got it and then you put then your, you put the wedge in when you, yeah that's right that and that way even when you hammer it off it's clean but you still have to clean under that washer if if your tile is dirty before yeah, you put I mean, that if you down. Have, if you have cement underneath and you're pushing a tile down, I mean, there's no way of cleaning underneath the clip when you're... And we're all guilty for this. How many times have we made it a little bit too wet and then the juice starts coming yeah, up always. in between? <laughs> <laughs> This is how it is, man. You got to stay clean, man. You got to keep cleaning, man. <laughs> That's the number one thing in Thailand is clean. It goes more than beyond just about like using these clips only to install these tiles. I mean, it goes beyond that, right? I mean, the tiles that are getting produced now are absolutely garbage. They have bows in them, lips, like you, huge if bows. You look eye right. level, if you look at an eye level tile, you're following the line from left to right. All of a sudden, the tile will just go like a huge bump out of nowhere. The larger format tiles, if they're not baked properly or manufactured properly, you have those bows. Yeah, and nice. then all of a sudden, you, you're you smart enough to take two and put them face to face and 100%. show it to the client and go, look, my level's straight. The tile's not straight. You have 100%. to. So there's a bow there. So how do you want to go this? You can't go staggered. Yeah. And they're actually putting on the boxes now, do not install unless you have a leveling system. Really? And they actually I've say actually that seen that on a couple boxes. Wow. Yeah. And the funny part is this isn't determined by price anymore. At one time, I would tell my customers, you cannot buy, I will not install a tile under $3 a square foot. You could be paying $25 a square foot. These tiles are still shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you well, could, the tile could be shit, but it could also be expensive. No, but, but if it's I'm also paying $25 a tile... Yeah. I would think that their kiln drying time I mean, would be slower. Not necessarily, because it could be the actual brand. It could be the material that's used in it. Well, we have a fix for that, and that's called a zip wall. We'll take a pole, and we'll squeeze it down and tighten them <laughs> up. I've done that before. Very, very, very clever idea. About it. Thanks for showing me that. <laughs> I've done that before with your reshaped tile. Just yeah. for the sake of you getting gotta it into it. Down. You got to force them down. You got to force it down. Hopefully yeah. it doesn't break. Let's get into showers, man. So okay. when you did all your homework and stuff like that, what, what system do you use? Honestly, orange, man. Orange. You're a Schluter, Schluter guy? Nice. Schluter all day. Why not do the rubber membrane? Why not do the dry pack? Why not do, uh, I don't know. Everyone's copied orange now, right? So everyone's doing their board. For me, I like I like those pre-sloped pans, man. Yeah. Those pre-sloped pans are well, amazing. Cardito's, Cuts. he's like a dry pack guy. Yeah. For me, me that, dry pack okay, dry packs I, takes two time. It doesn't make sense for me. Okay, okay so I want to i want to like defend myself here yeah. i would love to use this a styrofoam pan if i was in control of having that area that i could do that and actually just drop it in but most of the scenarios that i've been in it doesn't make any sense for me because i don't like to cut the pan so i lose the level on the outside it's faster for me because i've been doing dry packs you, you gotta, i'm 30 i'm 30 years in this business we've been dry packing everything man but you got to evolve too man i mean, I, I have i've used them where the, i can if the foam is too big like i mean schluter's got how many sizes they now have a ton of sizes so now. you don't cut one side you got to cut all four sides all four. or you cut all three sides and now generally cold. you're cutting from the center of the drain out yes. so your well, perimeter is going to be roughly the same slope as for group. for me though i have more control with the sand bed i feel it's a little bit cheaper for me i've got it down to a certain science you know you do something so long you kind of figure out the tricks to it i do love the styrofoam i'm totally all over it. you know guys i love schluter so no no for me it just it just makes sense it's faster the actual watertight base that you get from it once it's all complete i think it's did unmatched. you start with cement board of some kind and then curdy on top of it or did you start around curdy board time curdy board time i started with cement board and then curdy oh okay well and yeah then, i did cement board and drywall and then i'd put the curdy over top cement board and drywall what are you on the walls I'd cement be, board or drywall yeah i oh, would I do either or the only time i used concrete board was when i had a large format tile and i didn't want to have a skin on it so i didn't want something peeling off because with drywall if it ever has water damage the skin can peel off and your tiles can fall off how about this question uh, and i meant to cut you off i'm sorry <laughs> 
<laughs> Matt, how about this boy. question? How about that age old argument that I've heard from a few? Uh, how do I want to describe these assholes? Um, oh, that's how it is. Assholes <laughs> that are online that are against Schluter, where they say the build up in the corners and all this fucking bullshit, how you can't properly tile you and all this other crap. And I'm like, what, what are your thoughts about that? Honestly, I get it. I get it. Like, it does create a divot, especially for corners where you're triple wrapping a membrane over each other. It does create a quarter inch build out where you have to build the rest of your shower up. There is a small solution to it. I mean, Schluter can indent their curdy board where the band is going. That's, that's a, a good, good that's idea. actually a good idea. But the problem um, is that they're offering a sheet that's four by eight or 32 by 60. Yeah. They don't know which side you're going to well, use. Even if they leave it at the bottom and uh, where the that's actually a really are. good idea. We should bring that up next that's time because the, they can treat them like drywall sheets yeah, I mean, where it has a factory if, edge. Even if you have mosaic and you're putting your curdy board on and then you have that tape seam, that tape seam is at least an eighth off level from yeah. the rest of the wall, right? Yeah. So if it was indented an eighth, then you still have a level. I usually just take my thin set because I've been mudding for so many years and I'll just like yeah, a paintbrush. I know you love floating it. Yeah, baby. float it all the way around <laughs> and uh, I'm good to go. And then when I get to the tiles, like, uh, you know, I'll always do the outside level and I'll pitch it to the drain. I'll right? only yeah. float it if I'm doing a really thin mosaic. I mean, if you Because you will get the flexion yeah. with that. No, I always do because I, I like putting my pencil marks on there. I like drawing on the concrete thin set. <laughs> but even more important before we get too far ahead, I think that a lot of people need to hear that rubber pans are shit. Com yeah, completely shit. Yeah, I so, mean, and they're never done properly either. They're not glued. They're not, nothing's done properly. They're basically just wrapped around the, the drain and then that's it. That's right. 20, left loose. 20 years ago when I started to Schluter, I worked for insurance companies and I would always walk into the house and the, they would always say to me, oh, you know, my drain stinks. They would always send us in to fix the drains. And it was never the drains. What it was is the rubber pan would go up the wall, then shield or the concrete board or the drywall, typically drywall because no one ever wanted to spend any money, would be on top of the rubber. Some guys would always put screws lower than they were supposed to because yeah. you know you're supposed to stay a foot away or 10 inches yeah. from the, the bottom of the yeah. pan. They would be like up three inches. You're sand, you, you know, you're gonna put a sand bed in top. Now you're past that, and then they're wondering why they're getting leaking mold. And then another thing happens is that because there's not a waterproof membrane on top, that concrete, that sand bed acts as a sponge and it behaves like a swamp. It stinks. Back in the crustaceous period when you were doing tile, <laughs> you would do the rubber membrane and then you would put drywall on top of that one foot that's lifted. Up yeah, so what we wall? did what we did first was we'd put the drywall pack. We'd first put the pan Dry in. Pack. No, we'd put the no. pan in first, the rubber pan. Yeah. Back then it was two by fours, and then we would just take the rubber pan, fold it over as nice as we could. Well, typically we're supposed to be up 12 inches or 10 inches with screws. We used stainless steel screws. Guys, you would just use drywall screws. Eventually they would snap and break off. Nobody cares because after the two-year warranty or one-year warranty, nobody gives a shit. But anymore. drywall went in front of that rubber. We put drywall in, in right. Down, on top of that right down to the floor not all the way to the floor but and we, then the dry pack will go there that's right so you're putting a moisture absorbing material over rubber i didn't say it made sense this is what i'm we just did. trying to do yeah. the math there that doesn't make any sense to me yeah. and that's actually where all the problems came from, from yeah. leveling a shower it started from the rubber down i mean yeah. the rubber yeah. the rubber kicked out the drywall a even lot. more yeah because try quarter, folding quarter rubber in that inch. corner yeah you, you ever try to fold the rubber in the corner yeah i you ever try to fold I've been in a lot of corners trying to fold rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know that Schluter's tray is better. It's argument. Like, listen, I've done showers where it's an odd shape and you can't use one of theirs and you have to do dry pack, right? Yeah. And it's good to actually brush up on your skills and do the dry no, pack. No, of course. 100%. 100%. But it's nice to actually have a tray to come in and then you can get it started in that and way. Out. In and out. Yeah. And then you get it. Started. And then I, I, like, I, I still am dumbfounded on how many clients, and I'm sure that you've dealt with this, Matt, they still believe that the tile is a waterproofing membrane. <laughs> you <laughs> Honestly, laughing. 90% 90, 90 of the homes I go into, people don't even want waterproofing. They just want what's there. Wow. What's prepped. They don't care about spending the extra money and getting it done properly. And they'll spend the money on the tile. They'll spend the money. They won't spend the money on the tile. But that's the thing going on with these tiles is that you can have a cheap tile and it mimics a more expensive tile, but the quality is not there. Are you talking porcelain or ceramic? I'm talking mainly porcelain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you can. Glaze. These, yeah. these vein tiles. Yeah. I mean, they all look the same. Yeah. Right? 
But when you're actually working with them, you can tell the yeah. quality and yeah, how they, they ship fast. And it actually takes me 10 times longer. The color's not them. all the way through. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like the bevels are all different. So what is, okay, 4x4 four four shower, what is the cost to actually install waterproofing? The range, I don't want so to like hold you. So like a full shooter um, cost for a shower probably ranges from 15 2000 to Like that's with the drain, install, the pan, install all the, the membrane. Product, yeah, everything. and that's to their standards too, right? Like you get their 25-year warranty uh, as well. That just blows my mind it that blows. clients don't get this, man. They no, just yeah. don't well, understand. Another thing they, they don't, don't get is... It. They don't want to spend it. And that's why I'm half the time I'm Frankensteining these showers. I'll be using a Schluter base. And then I'll rub remembering the, ha- the rest of the wall because they don't want to spend money on the curdy. Well, wow. let's talk about the drain. The drain starts at 110 bucks, 120 bucks. And let's talk about where all the leaks begin. Where's the one yeah, position it's, where it's all, all the leaks come from? The drain. The drain. The base. Yeah. So why would you want to temper with the drain? Clients, get into your car today and start tampering around with the airbags. <laughs> But that's another thing. You like, don't okay, need it. So now we got... You got we, a seatbelt. Start tampering around with this airbags, all right? <laughs> wow. We know the world of tile now is big on porcelain. Yeah. Big on large format. Yeah. I can't tell you if I've ever installed a ceramic. No, that's not true. I'm sorry. Subway tile is always ceramic. I hate subway tiles. I know, but I'm not a huge fan of it either. But yeah. yeah, that's the only ceramic tiles that I've ever touched in my life. Other than that, it's been mostly naturals. What what are clients, what's the market looking for when you're, you're working? Honestly, everything's big now. Everything's big porcelain tiles i mean they're starting at 24 24 i mean 24 24 is the new 12 by 12 it's a tiny tile it's now. a tiny tile yeah and <laughs> these people want four by two six by threes ten by five and then they want you to cut the price because they're figuring yeah. oh you put one tile in yeah, you're basically halfway yeah, done you put one tile in and then you're done that's it you know the funny part is when i grew up starting in tiles it was all ceramic because you couldn't find the proper equipment to cut porcelain yeah there was such a problem everything was hand grinded well, back when I was doing yeah. it. So you, if you weren't good with a grinder, you weren't getting any work. Actually, most of my work done and now. And chips came with grinder. the work. So it was all ceramic. And You're then cutting it, most of it on grinder? I, I hand love, grinder? I love using You don't grinder. use a wet saw? For the certain size, I'll use it, but everything's too big now. You don't snap? On you don't score and snap? Well, all the cool kids are scoring and snapping. I don't, I don't get a clean cut. I don't get a clean but cut. But all the cool kids are scoring and snapping. <laughs> I'm but just saying. You're also, blades, you're also a polisher and buffer, clean. too. Yeah, I know. I polish everything. Yeah. Polish and buff everything. You don't get a clean cut unless you do both. Because the idea is, and I agree with you on this, is that your cut should look like a factory. It should look exactly factory. Yeah. It should look like you went to the factory there and you bought that custom size tile. Better. Are you saying like a it's micro bevel? It should mimic the other sides of the tile. Yeah, it should. If you have a tile connecting to a tile, that's going to be exposed, even if you're going to squeeze silicone through yeah, it. Yeah, we, we it know the old school guys. Clean. They would just make it like a cut leave a gap and fill it in with grout and, it, and then yeah. add another quarter inch to a half inch bead of well, caulking. <laughs> that's another that's another thing. How do you thing. like the caulk in your shower there? Yeah, it's I nice know. and big, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's another thing that's changed to come a long way. Our smallest line 30 years ago was a oh, quarter was a quarter inch. I tell you we a funny story, doing Matt. Eights. Like actually I had to go I was in Portugal. This is like 10 years ago. And I came across one mil spacers because I couldn't find 16th here. I think the smallest I could find was an eighth of an inch. And I wanted to go even smaller than that. And then I found, I bought bags. I brought bags. And then sure enough, a few months later, fucking showed up in the store. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how hard it is to bring bags of spacers from Europe? Into, so yeah. do you agree with spacers also? I agree with them. For sure I do. I want uniformity. Yeah. Yeah. Of course if you're I doing do. like mosaics where yeah. you need to space something. I don't need to be a hot it. shot and go, oh, look, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. No, yeah. man. Just put the spacers in. Yeah. That's all. You reuse them if you can, hopefully. Most yeah, of the especially, time. Hopefully, you're buying rubber ones. Rubber ones? Aren't they all made out of plastic, plastic. or some sort? Not all of them. What? Are these from Croatia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to see one? <laughs> niches everyone fucking loves niches everybody wants love a niche. niches everyone but the thing is how do you price your niches man because obviously they take a shitload of time Honestly, to do it's all according to time I so mean, it's all hourly right yeah it's all according to time. so you're, you're not on a square footage price no but a lot of people are asking tile guys to go square footage price because you they can't. know it'll benefit you can't. them no you can't because you can spend maybe a day two making the perfect niche exactly um, like everybody wants everything everybody wants miters custom made quartz no more niches, metal no more metal i mean, metal still nice i don't have anything against my but a lot of we're noticing a lot of clients are, are asking shells. you to shape the tile and make the edge instead of put an edge profile yeah, on there 100%. right They're which is more time design. more 100%. money that's how it works right you gotta pay for what you're doing are you doing longer niches now shorter niches what do you do what's yeah, big I mean, right now according to what the framing is 
behind the shower. I mean, not a lot of people want to pay to cut the stud and reinforce to make a full vertical niche. I mean, some people do, but the biggest they can possibly go, they'll do it. And what is it right now for you? What are you seeing? They're probably asking you to go wall to wall. Wall to wall. Which means that you got to cut. The, yeah, I mean, which means you got to the, cut. Then right? you which is structural them, now. Well, no, then you explain to them that's an exterior wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you want me to cut that, I actually have to build a wall in front of that and wall. And call an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, just build a wall in front of yeah. that wall and then I'll do it. But now your shower is smaller, yeah. right? You it definitely goes, can't put a niche on it. How about benches? Wall. Benches are actually face slowly fading away. Wow. People don't want benches. Yeah, nobody wants I've always recommended a bench because one, women shave their legs. Two, men bathe their undercarriage. Yeah. And <laughs> neither action can be done with both legs down. The corner shelves from Schluter. I mean, those are perfect for. Are women. they strong enough for it? Those are very strong. Really? I've actually tested a couple, yeah. The ones that go right into the joint, the crouch So joint? there's actually two of them. There's one that goes in the joint, and, and the, one then the ones on the that back. gets installed Screwed. in the back. See, I like benches, and I like them heated. Do you remember the bench we heated? Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I just found out that the back is not allowed. <laughs> 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 We're just talking Hang on a second. Like, uh, I, I can, you can't we, do that. We can, we can do a whole show about stuff. You know that it's yeah. illegal to put a chandelier yeah. over a freestanding bathtub. Yeah. That's illegal. There's lots of stuff that's illegal, but we know that is done because you can flip through any design magazine. The thing and it's is, there. Yeah, yeah, and I and honestly, the install was so beautiful that I'm so confident with it. Yeah, if you get the mechanics of how it works and yeah. how to protect it from water ever reaching it or whatever, yeah. I mean, it should be fine. I was it. very happy with it. Still, am. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still do it. I'm still trying to work a, a shower where I can heat all the walls. Yeah, we just did a, a little. Surface. We just did a little back surface just so that when you're sitting on the quartz that was heated and then leaning on the porcelain with your back you kind of like lean back and relax for a minute it was warm and it was amazing that's actually a pretty cool idea you get a lot of clients asking for shower door less showers curbless yeah i mean no no curbless too but everything less oh you mean like so no door one pane of glass that's it not no glass no no glass just completely open right next to the bathtub i don't think i've ever actually done a shower you haven't done like that that's very european they're doing that now so the tub still gets wet we've done showers one pane glass no door curbless people are like obviously more attracted to the curbless shower curbs create most problems they collect all the water and all that stuff right i've never liked curb no i've hated curb since day one but i know especially with my car when my rims get it (laughs) try the veal (laughs) i've done a lot of handicapped bathrooms yeah but that's where the idea came from and i really appreciate that right so it's wonderful but i always thought about it because i never understood why you had to have a six inch curb and i still tell schluter to this day there is no reason to build this curb six inches tall i i don't get it man i've always cut it down too to make it shorter i guess because most showers back in the day used to always flood yeah because of hair bathtub yeah, but you can open up the drain and then take the hair out. They yeah. have the strainer and well, everything Well, it's called like that. maintenance. Yeah, that's how it works. You but should be cleaning your yeah, shower. I, I was, was going to ask, showers. Matt, this is a really important, like, this is going to, like, change. The earth rotation is going to fucking change as soon as you answer this question, okay? <laughs> tile the ceiling of the shower? I don't, or I don't, no? Honestly, I don't like I don't tile You don't ceilings. like tiling the ceiling? Yeah! Because that's that's you, you're Carlito's buddy, that's, that's why. That's such a <laughs> freaking liability, <laughs> man. No, especially if people are putting slabs now on the ceilings. That are no, not, no, if it's a slab, I would not. mechanically fasten it. You'd put it there and all the perimeter yeah, would I have mean, mechanical fasten. People are fasten. putting four foot by two foot tiles. They're not being supported by anything on the ceiling, like this can kill somebody wow no it wouldn't be drywall that would be on that ceiling it'd have to be no, concrete yeah board. it's obviously reinforced i've always made a concrete board yeah anything heavy what, the not way even was- curdy board i've never put curdy board on the ceiling i've always put concrete board on yeah. the ceiling and then curdied it because i want it concrete yeah. up there well yeah, I mean, the problem curdy, the problem with that though is, is the really skin scratchy. again no no curdy is adhered and we know the concrete board's porous and the thin set will actually bite right into it you're using a modified material and i've also been known to use a modified material over curdy that's not their schluter product because we all know that they'll void it, but we know that if it's cured properly, which means you can't tile as soon as you've done it, you have to let it set yeah. and cure, then it will not... You Good luck on trying to rip that I've, out. I've only used modified on plywood. That's the only thing I use modified. You, it's so always wait, non-modified. non-modified on top of the curdy? I'm always non-modified. Nah, not me, man. Always. I've never yeah. had a problem. You let it cure. It's important to cure. We, but we know this. It's so an air dry. Modified's an air dry. It's not a chemical dry, where a non-modified is not a chemical chemical dry so it doesn't need any air so it will dry no matter what i want more glue there are modified cements that have special curing and i use that from tech like the 
one you showed yeah. me, the 487. That's right. I put that shit on it's everything. It's a dual purpose. Everything. Everything. It's so got the glue, but warranty, it's got the sand. They'll warranty it yes. over at Schluter. Schluter actually is working with them, and they're, it's stamped on there that Schluter approves. The 487 is a non-modified modified. So for me, it was always... The hardest thing teaching anyone, doesn't matter if it was on television or if it was on my job sites, no one could figure out when to use modified or non-modified. The 487 just made it bulletproof. I got so tired of that. I just fucking modified all of it. Yeah. And the it's 487 the is so hard. <laughs> best, best cement. I will never switch to anything else. <laughs> it's personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> mine, mine too, by the way. Manny's like, not mine. I don't think not so. Mine. Not What's mine. your favorite thin set? It's my pay, but my go-to. But which one? The Depends. I'll go an Ultra Flex two or three because it's got glue in it. But if I'm using glass, I'm actually depends on what glass they're use. I'm using. I can use their P10 or whatever it yeah. is. Uh, I keep calling it P90X, eh? But it's not. It's P10. <laughs> P90 is a submachine gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that exercise pro program from Tony Banks or whatever, isn't oh, yeah, it? Yeah, P90X. P90X. I don't know what the yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll use that. Then if it's a like a CG tile, which is like a really thin five eighths by five eighths, eighth inch thick, Granny Rapid. I gotta work fast, but that's also well. He, you're Polymer. a map. You used to be a map A guy. You everything you did was well, map until A. until I got introduced to tech, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you. Honestly, the only the only other cement I'll use is actually the Allset from Schluter under their mats because I find that nothing bonds better to the wood to the substrate. To the substrate, yeah, yeah. That, yeah that's where that I feel. Stuff that's where I'm different. Grabs that matting. I'm a tech guy. Before I would go to the Schluter thin set, I would definitely go to Matt Pay. What are you using for grout? I tried Laticrete. I'm usually using Matt Pay. Are you using their epoxies or are you using um, FA? I actually got introduced to their epoxy. I love the epoxy. I yeah. always, I, you can't use epoxy on natural stones, so I'll use FA. Yeah. But uh, on everything else, I'll use epoxy. Yeah. And the very first one I did was that Penny Round Spherical one. Fucking hard. I probably lost shower. like 20 pounds just doing it <laughs> from like sections and then wiping it off and shit like that. It was a good thing it was a shower because it was just soaked in water and it was just you know i was collecting and taking it out yeah i can imagine how many buckets you went through too. oh it was insane well, it was absolutely the, insane oh, the most amazing there's i guess there's more than one more one amazing thing about the epoxy is it doesn't crack your joints aren't going to crack you it's don't not even that. need silicone it's, grout it's the color it's, because i don't uh, care what you say any shower perfect. any use yeah. over years i don't let alone the bodily fucking fluids that are in there it's the shampoos that will change color of grout uh, do they still have unsanded sanded grout on the shelf are they yes. still yeah, they still sell both, and yeah. then they actually sell a mixture of the two. Yeah, because wow. I, I usually buy it with that. a boost. Yeah. I'll buy it with a I boost. I stopped using that maybe my third or four year of construction. Yeah. I was like, this is bullshit. I want something better, stronger. Because when I started mixing it, and it was especially the, the, the darker colors, yeah. I was going, that's not black. That's a nice little gunmetal gray. Yeah, yeah. I want black. <laughs> no, honestly, Who the hell has it black? always dries 10% lighter than that tag. Yeah, even, but even if you're using But epoxy, proper... no. Yeah. And FA, no. It's going to be exactly yeah. its true color. That's why yeah. I like it. And I just like the bulletproof of epoxy. I've seen my bathrooms four years later and the color is exactly the same. And that's what you want to get. That's what you want. Because those were the biggest problems actually. Yeah, that's the callbacks. That's with, where you get yeah, callbacks. Yeah, exactly. It's all in the grout color. And your favorite choice of grout is Mape. Yeah, I mean. Are you disappointed by no, that? No, no, no. It's personal opinion. <laughs> it's fine. Tech don't make grout. I'm, I'm happy that I got him away from everything else. I got him to 487. Yeah. yeah. It tech, was hard. Tech don't make grout? He fought me every day. Yeah, tech don't make grout? That was bad. No, they make tech. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy for grout also. I, I thought it was going to be like Hilti, where Hilti doesn't make a table no. saw or a chop <laughs> They saw. make a great epoxy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hilti? Uh, yeah. No, they do not, man. Um, if this is another argument we're coming up on next show, next podcast. <laughs> What's your wet saw of choice? I got two. I got a Batipav, and then I got a Husqvarna. Which is the first one? Batipav. Which is that one? It's, uh, you know, the rail saws? Oh, yeah. Oh, the badass boy. The, like I've yours. only seen, yeah, but mine's a, mine's a ruby. No, mine's a Ramondi. Sorry. Yeah, yours is a Ramondi. Mine's a Ramondi. So that's what. So oh, you got a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. How big is of yours? I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I knew it was gonna go there. <laughs> hey, listen. If you're if you're in this industry right now and you don't have a tile cutting machine that can't cut anything under forty six inches, you're not in business. Yeah. No, you need so, it, right? Yeah. Those are nice. You need a forty eight. And how is that Husqvarna? Because I've heard good, bad with it. Honestly, it's only good for smaller tiles. I don't like to push table saw 
saws because it only limits you to cut big on one side of the tile because this left stand actually stops the tile from dragging yeah. through the tray. So if you're cutting like a bigger tile, I mean, that thing's pretty much useless. That's why I like the rail saws. I, I do like, I think they perfected the, the water feeding mechanism on that I tile mean, the saw. cut you get from that thing is insane. But no, just the, the minimum splash and the how close the, because the water is actually in the trough. It's actually in the you tray. Can, yeah, you can switch it. You can yeah. switch it from the tray. I, that I was impressed top. with. Yeah, I was like, really oh, cool. that's a smart little detail, man. Really cool. So you guys know, I took my Ramondi and I flipped the blade around. I, instead of pulling, I push, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you I should try you it just that, try though. it good to know <laughs> really why do you do that i was told to by the guys that sold it to me cleaner cut honestly i tried it both ways now it's literally i swear i can do a 48 inch side at a quarter inch and it's perfect it's better than a score and cut it's perfect it has to be better than a score yeah. cut it's a cut man. and i can still do a 45 miter and then and then and then polish it right that's where i want to do a big shout out to matt he, he taught me how to uh, buff and polish and and miter so that's that, important man. that was a huge game changer for that's me that's important i hate metal i think that metal should only go in a threshold between a hardwood floor and the porcelain you're talking about edge profiles that's right okay i love mitering now like after we did that miter and then we epoxy filled it yeah no, i fell in love man yeah. Yeah. That was it. I was sold. There's no better, cleaner look. I would rather I spend agree. an extra couple of hours at work yeah. and do that and look at it and be like, uh, ah. Yeah. Since we got onto this topic, what's your choice of blades? Core all day. Oh, yeah? Yeah, me yeah, too. They actually, just, they actually just re released a new series. Oh, my God. Really What's nice. It Game changing. What color? The hummingbird series. What color is it? Hummingbird black, series. Black. So it's black still. The black one's black, always been the best one. They actually switched the blades still. They did. Oh my god. I haven't bought a blade in a while. Better than factory. Just from a cut. You don't even need to buff it. Wow. No microchips. Nothing. What? Depends and on they got the whole range marble porcelain everything. granite they whatever they got the best pads they got the best whole whole bits they, they do have the good stuff I yeah i like love core stuff. especially yeah. the piranha series yeah, unbelievable. No, nice. yeah. unbelievable but you have to use that wet <laughs> like if you don't wet it what man, do you mean of course you have to use it yeah. wet no yeah. somebody told me i could use a dry yeah, and i no, burned no, no. one you of the porcelain yeah, tiles yeah. and i'm like what the fuck yeah, is this shit? Sparks who told you that? Flying. Who told you that? I don't want to get into the names. <laughs> Why not? You guys out there know who it is. <laughs> do they have a core one for glass as well? Uh -huh. Yeah, they do. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Because glass actually, has always been my I've biggest. actually watched somebody on Instagram take a glass cup, and then they actually put it right through their wet saw. It actually clean sliced yeah, it. Yeah, didn't break here. the cup? It did not even break the cup. Oh, my God. Clean that is slice. I know. That's With amazing. that blade. With that blade. I, I'm sold then. Oh, yeah. Manny, I have something before we get too far ahead. What is your choice? of tools for grinders uh, you mm. know what i'm gonna answer that it's I, gonna be makita it is makita is up Minus there but two. actually i'm gonna have to go with manny's company on this one really yeah. for a grinder because over makita because of the speed i can adjust the speed of my bosch but i can but I, you can adjust, I can on adjust on mine too. on my makita too i, I don't have the makita and one. i have the hose connection oh. The new Bosch ones you can adjust. The older Bosch you can't. Yeah. So the I older have, Makitas I have, I have you can't. The newest one. The newest oh, that's one. funny. The problem. The problem. No. <laughs> You're gonna try mine. Yeah. You're gonna try mine. You're gonna fall in love. Is with it, it battery powered? No. no. But he doesn't yeah. want it. <laughs> no, I, I have I have my Hilti Matt, on. Matt, why don't you ask me if mine's battery powered? <laughs> wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I have my Makita. Wait, anybody here using a Hilti? Uh, I, have my, I have my I have Nothing my no uh, Makita with the with the cord and the hose. And then Shut I have down. my Hilti. <laughs> <laughs> There's another blade. I don't know what the company is. It's that Centura. It's just a yellow yep. grinder. You yep. know exactly. It's a cheap one. It's, from, it's, it's a Korean blade. Yeah, but it's a cheap one. Cuts, man. man. The dry yeah. cut you get from this yeah. thing is I know. It's magical. like 10 bucks. It's it's, no. It's, is it Japanese blades. or Chinese? It's Korean. It's Korean. Yeah, they're Korean blades. The South is okay. <laughs> Centura sells one it's yellow it's like 10 bucks and no they're not 10 they bumped them up no, no they're more expensive course, but they're really good blades man 45 yeah do they only come in the four size or? so they come four four and a half that's it that's it okay. what about what yeah. about your scoring cuts what do you like monolith montolit you i'm the same when i saw yeah. them I'm at the show i saw them at the show i was like he was he was actually scoring glass mosaics man dude this guy yeah but i can do it too. this guy was scoring glass my on a 45 what and cutting it and clean it have clean you done it though? Like, i've done it i've done an entire i was impressed wall. with that what and it's like 600 bucks right no 600 700 i bucks? think they're starting for 5500 that's maybe. cheap man 
But uh, I don't even want to tell you what I paid like for mine. I think it was like nine hundred bucks. Well, you have the massive one. Yeah, dude, there's so much to get into. Lay it on me, baby. When when you do your corners after grouting, do you silicone grout? Do you just silicone or do you caulk? I don't grout anything where silicone's going. I like to fill that entire void with silicone. You do. But here's a question: I'm not a big fan of putting silicone everywhere in the shower. It's only where tile. The, meets just tile. the corners, yeah. So all your expansion joints. But a really tiny, tiny, like I'm talking eighth inch. Yeah, I don't like a big bead. Here's another question: Do you guys like tiles? No, definitely not big bead. No. Honestly, I don't even want to do anything more than an eighth anymore. Yeah, it's just too ugly for me. Yeah. If someone even to, to say three sixteenths, I'm like, sorry, I can't do the job. But here's <laughs> okay. But here's the question, though: If you're using epoxy grout, and we know that epoxy grout won't crack, yeah, why do you need to put silicone? Good question. I mean, no, I'm just talking about in general when you're using normal grouts. Well, even with epoxy, I've seen epoxy crack before. I have, have, I've seen epoxy flake off of a really? tile before, yeah. I don't know if it was because it wasn't installed properly, but I've seen it multiple Too water. occasions. Yeah. I've never seen epoxy doesn't use water. So. No, but if you want to stretch and po- no. clean it. No. How, what, what epoxy are you using? Because epoxy when we were ta- is solvent-based and water actually cannot penetrate. It's oil and vinegar. It's oil and water. It, water can't get into the epoxy. It's physically, it's chemically impossible. We, we had a conversation with Matt You Pei, use water. And they you were use saying, water to clean it. Yeah. You don't scratch the surface of anything. You're using I water. I misunderstood what he said yeah. then. But no, water can't get, you can, and he said you can actually pour as much water on it over and over. It yeah. does not get into the mix. It's, in, it's impossible. Question, does epoxy flex? It doesn't. I'd say that's the thing. It doesn't flex, and then that's the argument where they say that you should use a silicone. Yeah. But the question is, okay, I got to backtrack it now. Are you spray foaming the walls? Have yeah, you actually built the house a certain so way most of the, yeah. so the house doesn't breathe? So yeah. if the house doesn't breathe, then it's going to work. If you're using Curdy, Curdy has flexibility in the yeah. foam, yeah. right? So that's where the two planes are. Same thing with Ditra. So you have to keep on going back to where the original structural points are to understand it. If you go in there and it's bat and it's vapor barrier and there's got holes in and you're using hockey sticks for your framing, then sure, you're going to silicone the shit yeah. out of it because yeah. that's going to eventually yeah. crack. And that's majority of the houses that we do or they're, the structure is not done properly. So if I know that i did the framing and i did everything and i know i got two pounds spray foam in there yeah i actually well, the reason i don't like the silicone point. beads yeah. is because silicone beads over time doesn't matter which caulking it is yeah doesn't matter even that caulking that we were introduced to at the show recently it, it will discolor 100 right it just discolors but even more important than all of that most people don't realize that after the grout, just because it's surface dry, it's not dry inside and it's still sweating Doesn't for a cure. couple of days after. So when you apply silicone grout, you're really supposed to wait eight to nine days before you silicone or silicone grout or caulk. So that's the thing. That's a lot of things that people don't know. They say, oh, but, but the silicone peel. And I'm like, yeah, because you did it right after you grouted, man. Yeah. Or letting someone take a shower in between until it dries. Yeah. Sometimes they leave that soap and the scum in there. They're not supposed to take showers yet, right? Like I leave a house and I say, I'll be back in eight days to silicone and I'm done. And they use it? And then they go in the shower. That's pretty crazy. You know, and then I'm like, (laughs) now now you got no warranty on it. What are you doing? I'm trying to think of who's the one that said that the clients are the dumbest one when it comes to construction. No, the clients are killing me. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to ask you, Matt, what what were you, were you, you, did you start on Ditra Heat or did you start on New Heat or? Honestly, I don't, I never used New Heat. Never. So you started on Detroit Heat. I'm, I'm been steady orange, everything. So All Detroit my Heat. I did. Yeah. How do you like the new rules with the ESA bullshit inspection fucking laws and rules? I, I fucking hated it. It delays everything. It's a nightmare. It delays everything. I have no problem with it. I have a major problem with it because the ESA is overstepping. Yeah, That's all they're like, doing. They're overstepping and they have no have right your, to be doing you this. You have your requirements. Okay, can I, can I say a story, guys? I've been pretty loyal and here's a plug to Sensura. I typically, sure. 70, 70, 80% of my work goes to them. They've been really great to me. One of the guys, the salesman, gives my number out to a lady that had problems at her house you know she's like hey available and i said yeah i'll come by take a look at the the tile job and i'm looking around the guy put one thermostat cable in there's only one sensor there should always be two i always believe that you should put two in Uh, one fails you can put another one in you two yeah one comes with okay but some people don't do it one comes with the thermostat but even worse there is a wire still that you're supposed to cut out in the detra and place that you mean the mat you're supposed to cut out the mat 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're supposed to put that in. This yeah. guy put it up in the wall. Just the floor sensor. That's right. And it still gets hot. <laughs> no, it still gets no. hot. He's he's talking about the very beginning portion That's of the right. cable. So that flat piece of black portion. Oh, oh he at puts the start. that in the wall. Yeah, you're not supposed to put it in the wall. But that still that, gets hot. That gets hot. It's yeah. in Detra in the instructions says oh, it's supposed Lord. to be cut okay. in the membrane at the base of the flooring. That's right. Of the wall and the flooring. That's where it's supposed to go. Yeah. What I'm leading to oh, is boy. that there's so many guys out there that think they're tile setters. You know, they know what they're doing or they're just guessing and they're creating a problem. This is just one job of many that I've seen this. Yeah, we need people. Like I take a picture, my my electrician comes in, he tests a mat before I start. We get a reading, then we put it in, we test it, turn on the power. I take a picture of it. We call ESA. If they don't show up, they give us a pass. It's done. If they don't show up, they so, give they us a pass. They don't show up a lot. First of all, ESA does never shown up on the exact same day unless you're actually doing a meter transfer, which has a four-hour window. They never show up for me either. And, and the picture is fine for them. And as long as I'm using a, I, I a get, licensed I electrician. I get your argument because it goes back to what Matt was saying is that with the clip system, drywallers and everybody else is getting into tiling, right? Sure. And I get about the safety. If you are have your electrician on site and he's installing this and he actually has to make that connection anyway for you to test it. So you have to test these cables three times before, during and after that you install. I don't need another inspector on here just for them to grab more attention to them and actually charge it's a charge. Yeah, it is a charge. Right? Yeah. So, sure. But that incompetent rule that you're kind of bringing up where you don't trust guys that don't know how to really do it, that applies to every single motherfucking trade on a job site. Yeah. So, it could be a bad framer. It could be a bad roofer. It could be a bad everybody. But I just don't like that this particular case, ESA is overstepping. That's all I'm saying. They are. They're slowing their job down. You're, Definitely slowing things down. Like you're at dramatically. Least three days. Yeah, you're dramatically changing the finish time of a tile install now. Dramatically changing as a result. Is, and they do not show up the same day, two, three days. They and don't now, show up at my job site at all. But I take full pictures. I show with measuring tapes. And if they have, been most, pretty cool. Most of the time, it's always an electrician coming yeah. and passing. When they it, know you're never... using a, a licensed electrician and you've taken those pictures yeah. and those numbers down, they're good with it. Going back to what you said earlier, you said that there's drywallers doing tile. Why don't those well, drywallers I mean, get drywallers better at the drywall so they don't have to do <laughs> tile? <laughs> no, he was you just know, saying that guys are actually stepping up and doing tile yeah, now I mean, because they think it's easy. Yeah, especially when you're in it's a house, you're already doing work. Your clients, like if you're at the beginning stage or you're a trade that comes before another trade, if you're working with that client and she's looking for that trade, you know what I'm saying? He'll actually propose that he can do it. Oh, well, I can do it. So, oh, so do far, it. all the people that I've worked with, I find that tiles are the most difficult out of the whole house. Trade-wise or work-wise? Finish-wise? Work-wise. I believe that tiles are so important and so difficult. There's so much stress involved. There's so much there is. fixing and leveling 100%. and, and le uh, like truing up with other products. Well, when you say difficult, what do you mean difficult? Because I'm thinking the difficulty is that there's such a range. A homeowner can go do their homework on Mr. Google here or Mr. Yeah. Homestars or whatever. And one person can go two bucks a square. Yeah. Another person can go as high as 20 bucks a square. Yeah. They really don't know who's good, who's bad. They just assume the low is bad and the high is good. So they go somewhere in between. They go somewhere in between. Well, yeah. But I've always told people that I don't care who you are as a homeowner, as a tradesperson, you take three, right? Ideally, you take five quotes Two are going to be very close to each other. Maybe a third will be close. One's going to be really fucking low and stupid. One's going to be really high and stupid. That's how you do your homework, well, but that's where the difficulty is. But can yeah. I ask you something? How much is typically a square foot for a tile? How much is a square foot? Wait, Honestly, the cost of a tile? Of a tile. So an average. Like range from anywhere from four a, yeah. to eight bucks. Good, we're talking, hang on. We're talking good quality tile? Yeah, like oh, a, good. Decent, a decent tile. I, I would say be the, four to 12. Okay, so why are people getting paid two or three when the tile's more expensive than the work? Because clients don't value the skill. When when, you're when your material is more expensive skill. than your labor, you got a serious clients problem Clients don't value the skill because they need to put the money into the sub-zero fridge, the wolf range, yeah. the Brazilian marble, the last one in the entire world for their countertop. They need to put the money in that and not into the skill. Yeah, no joke. I You're actually, right. this is actually the most used response I get back from a client. I'll give them a price and they'll be like, well, how hard is it to lay tile? Anybody wow. can do tile. Fuck. 
How hard is it to put some tiles on the floor? I don't understand. You guys have this leveling system. You can do it perfectly. Oh my God. I know. Nobody, you know, nobody understands how squaring hard rooms it is. Up. My job by itself is hard to do. But when you're going into a house where you're fighting against every trade before you to get your job done, that's when it really becomes a problem. Yeah. Like when it comes to framing, when it comes to drywall, when it comes to everything, everything before you, because you got to take everybody's mistake. You got to make sure those tiles are you're, never going to move. You're and part you of the finishing. Sure so yeah. I don't envy you guys. You're part of the finishing. Yeah. So everything falls on you. 100%. And you go into a shower, you throw your 72 on the wall and you go, oh, uh, half inch out of plumb. It is insane. What Listen, the fuck? There's, there's something we need to talk about or I'll talk about it. And <laughs> you guys can stay quiet. I really <laughs> believe that like 85% of all the problems that happen in the house start with the homeowner uh like, yeah dun, 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 dun. 100%. Listen, if you're a homeowner and you're hiring me, why are you telling me what to do? Why don't you just do it yourself? <laughs> Honestly, that's, that's why don't you do it yourself? The DIY Have you seen came. how expensive my tools are? How expensive my blades are? How expensive my leveling system is? You're making how too much money. You're my, making too my much money. Self leveler is. You have how expensive tools. <laughs> I could go on. And yeah. how heavy it is. It's not even light. And you can't mess with inset. You just can't. You make okay, a mistake. Okay. Right, this is going on a little bit of a tangent here, but <laughs> okay. I, and I agree. Okay, listen, listen. I, I have a major problem with that. Clients will always pay. Like, okay, they're right now shopping. They're shopping for all their Christmas decorations, and they're going to Queen West or they're going to these, you know, uh, whatever these these areas of the city, these high end areas, and they're willing to spend a lot of money on finishing things. But yet when it comes to the construction industry, we are not all millionaires. Like I think it's, I don't know, whatever. Uh, one, two percent make it big, like the Ellis Dons and the Madamies and all this other shit. Yeah. The majority of trades guys out there that have a one-man shop, a two-man, well, the ideal number is three-man shop. They're not multi-millionaires. They work, they know how to do their work, they do quality work. You shouldn't have the right to justify what they should get paid. If they give you a price, you shouldn't question it. If you want a cheaper price, then hire somebody else that's cheaper. Most likely, that person will always be eating rice every single lunch and will not speak English at all. And that's just the truth of it. If that's where you want to go, then go that Is that route. what you're saying, Don Cherry? <laughs> 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 the beauty of it is we don't have a broadcast. Would you right? like to so apologize answer. now? <laughs> it's okay. I won't, I won't rob McLean you, man. I won't rob McLean you. <laughs> but that's the truth of it, man. Seriously. Well, going back to what you said a second before the Don Cherry <laughs> comment, um, I wanted to mention to you that if you're going to, and I might as well be a Don Cherry here now myself. Oh, are you saying that you've never seen uh, no, 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 a, no. an immigrant do a job yeah. for cash and they're sitting no. in a basement doing I agree. a job? I'm laughing about it. I'm just okay, making a couple I'm of jokes. Saying. Um, but if you have you ever walked through a Madame home? It's disgusting. Yeah. It, the floors bounce. That must bang, be. Bang, dis- bang, <laughs> bang. You know? Oh, that, here's another That's thing. That's cold. Who? That's who, live low code. Who lays thin set and schluter over OSB? Do you know how many guys do that? Do you know how many guys are laying tile over osb a yeah. lot because <laughs> you guys just went quiet looked at me like huh i don't know that figure <laughs> i felt like i had a dog i, I think, was like i think we're not big like, enough oh, to have a research oh, team actually, right now i actually think you can lay detro over three quarter osb you you can you can even over five eighths but you should cut it out yeah if you're practicing good habit and you're already in there you can cut it out you can leave a little rim around the yeah, outside course, or yeah. find out where the floor joists are yeah yeah and where and did this go cleaner. this went to what uh, we were talking about oh you were saying we were no, talking the, about the, homes the and clients you, you were will pay about, the money for the tile but they don't want to pay the money for the trade yes yeah i mean customers just don't realize that they're only ripping themselves off the horrible part of this is is that there's so many desperate guys to that want to work for nothing like literally they want to work for nothing they're working for nothing and they're allowing the homeowner to allow them to take advantage of all of us by working for nothing but you'll always find another tile guy that'll do it for cheap yeah that's yeah. funny because always. in 30 years always. the only two guys i've ever found that i trust are mmc matt here and omid those are the only two but guys that i use the client and the line of credit that they got and the money that they want to save will tell you otherwise. 100%. That's funny because at, at, at the end of every tile job, every house that I go into to fix stuff, they're crying at the end. What they don't realize at the beginning, they just wanted to get the job done yeah. at their budget. A couple months later when they start looking at stuff and their toe got fucking <laughs> hit on a corner <laughs> or something's been cracked and hidden 
or grout starts popping out, they're like, <laughs> is, is that the new Schluter toe aging? Is that what this? I don't understand. No, no, no. This no, has nothing to do with Schluter. Lips from the top. Oh, the lippage. Toe. Yeah, <laughs> that lippage is that high. I have nothing to complain about with Schluter. Took the toe nothing. out. Uh, Actually, that's my go-to. Do you have any other products that you like to use next to Schluter? Honestly, it's just Schluter. Yeah, yeah it's the only thing I use. You've been brainwashed. Brainwashed. I have used. And Manny's gonna hate this. I have used Aqua. Aqua on walls. defense. Aqua I've used Aqua Defense. Walls. You know where? I use Schluter in the bottom. Do you know where? I used it in a gym. <laughs> where Aqua Defense? It? In a in a swimming pool. I thought it was like, like Aquafina or something like that. I was like, what are you talking about in the gym? In the gym. <laughs> like you were drinking it or something. No, no. Aqua Defense is from a pay product. Isn't they, that funny that you're have using one, it? They have a tech a, product too. But it's called no, Aqua Defense. Uh, the the tech is called Hydroflex. Oh, shit. It's right. There you, you go. Oh, you you just fucked up the plug. My point where I use Aqua Defense... I've used it outside <laughs> on a porch that was going to get cladded with stone because mm. people forget that the moisture comes up yeah. from the concrete. So you want to aqua. Well, I know guys that. that do blue skin, and then what they do is they leave six inches around the outside, not blue. You skin, can do that too as well, so that the thin stick can grab a little bit more, even though it grabs the blue skin. But yeah, you are right. That stuff is better. To go right across. But there's a window though. Eh? If you ever do use Aqua Defense outside on concrete, you have to install it and then you got to let it cure. It cures fast. It goes from like a light green to a dark green real fast, like a forest green. But you have to install the tile over it within a 24 hour period. So where does that sun hit? It acts as a primer, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if it's outside, why do you need a window? What do you mean? A window? <laughs> <laughs> there was a window. Uh, you said you started that. Just make a joke. <laughs> Try the veal. Try the veal. <laughs> Try the veal. <laughs> um, I think we've talked a lot about different grouts, thin sets. We've talked about our favorites. What is your favorite look and favorite tile for a bathroom? Maybe four foot tiles. Everything's wrapped. I mean, that's pretty much my favorite. Everything is uh, in your curbless. niches. Yeah, everything's. See, wrapped. that's really ironic because you don't like the ceilings that have tile, but yet I'm sure that you probably you're like me, where you like all the the vanity walls should vanity be all walls, tiled. Hundred percent. Yeah. right because it's a wet area you're using it you don't want drywall right there 100%. and you don't want to create some stupid little uh, backsplash ledge but then you get into the shower and you don't do the ceiling it doesn't feel like it's finished now I if know. you don't do the ceiling it actually looks clean because it uh it levels out to the rest of the washroom right I don't know. I like it on the ceiling, man. Mm. But yeah. Front foyers? Of course, style. Any entryway from an no, exterior but what place. Kind? What do you like? Oh, preferably, I would do slabs. Again? Yeah. yeah. Slabs. Hot laundry rooms? Slabs. Wow. Do you put a drain in laundry rooms? Of course you do. Yeah. It's cold. No, I mean, like, under, you know, sometimes you can put a drain on a second floor. Not all laundry rooms are in basements, right? And not all laundry rooms have showers, older ones. So, like, if you're if you're going into an existing one and you're laying tile. Even a, a, a laundry room in a basement should still have a drain. Yeah, maybe 10 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, close to or if not underneath the washer. Listen, we all know there's a lot of projects out there that are existing and do not have them. And that's why I'm saying sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll add in. Uh, all the laundry asking. rooms that we do upstairs all have their own pans. Yeah. So they're uh, on the curbs. And you're putting in what, a Schluter drain there? Yeah. Schluter. Yeah. How, drain, yeah. How do you feel about marble? Love it. You love it. I love uh, backsplashes love for kitchens. At it. No. When, when do you like oh, to use marble? Because it has the most most maintenance out of everything, right? They yeah. stain the fastest. You have well, to seal we just them had a, we just had another talk with Seat, and they made a really great point. Yeah. They said that most of the buildings around the world that are made of marble have no maintenance Interesting. and they're perfect and you know what i thought about it and i was like not that they're perfect they're weathered nicely yeah the and problem would be also well maintained no the thing is that their theory and i agree with them is that us here in north america when we put a brand new slab in our kitchen we want that thing to still look like it's bubble wrapped tight yeah Right. And then they don't want any nicks. They don't want any stains or whatever. And the moment you get a coffee stain, wine stain or whatever on it, they get upset about it. So that's what it is. And the weathered stuff in Europe, it has stains on it, but it actually goes towards the actual look of the stone. That's, yeah. And I like that. I, I think every single renovation that anybody should do should understand that it has an element of weatheredness in it. It has to. Not everything has to be fucking pristine clean. There should be wear and tear over time on yeah. it, but it shouldn't fall apart. There's a difference between the two. Yeah. yeah. So just a quick a couple of questions. We'll just answer them real fast. What do you do between wood and a porcelain? Do you just use uh, caulking, silicone grout, grout, between or wood and metal? caulking? Yeah. I mean, if there's no metal, obviously it's going to be caulking. Because but normally the, you go for metal. Yeah. I mean, you need you need that clean edge, especially to protect it from the hardwood guys. I mean, if you left the tile edge exposed while they're installing, they could nick a corner or whatever. So yeah. it creates 
a protective surface as well. I've always put the wood on, well, both surfaces are on the same height. Yeah. Same plane. Radiant heat, where do you like to put it? Basement. Everywhere. Man. Everywhere, yeah. Basement, everywhere. Main floors. Everywhere. You hear everywhere. that, everybody? Everywhere. 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 <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to start like introducing it into vanity tops, man. Like you ever wow. walk into, I've walked into That's Seat. Brilliant. I don't know about Centura, but when Did I walk into- Did you just say that in the mic? Yes. <laughs> when, when I walk into Seat and you actually go to a countertop or like a, a table to- do some it's sample it's it's heated that's very smart so why not heat your vanity tops in your bathrooms why not heat every surface that's why i want to heat the, the walls in the shower not the ceiling though i still tell it been the done yet? on the walls have you seen it been done they, i've seen it done with radiant but that's a different kettle of fish there you're yeah, running yeah, yeah. tubes in the walls and that's how you heat it but yeah there's a huge incident i just recently started putting heat into the showers you always put it in the bathroom floor but you don't put it in the shower in the floors shower floor, yeah. i want to do i want all my uh, shower floors to be warm how do you like uh, marble thresholds I fucking hate them <laughs> Fucking, I, fucking hate fucking them. Hate I them. love it, dude. I cringe and I cover my eyes when I'm walking mm -hmm. by the big box stores. That one section there, it's got the cream or the white, the cream or the white, the cream or the white. <laughs> Sometimes the gray. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. I hate them, oh, that's dude. That's fucking terrible. funny. Terrible. I hate them. How do you like the new area vents and genius? I mean, that guy is one smart man. That is the best finish you can get. And which one do you like out of them all? Like which I like style the, dry, do you like? the drywall finishers. The oh, no, drywall. no, I meant for the tiles though. Oh, like for the tile, that, obviously the flush mounts are the yeah. nicest. Yeah, yeah. But what they did with the drywall is that's brilliant. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. If you could change anything in the industry or the tile industry, what do you want to see changed? Wow, one just one thing. Huh. Just no, one. A couple just of things. One. There's many but, things that come okay, up. Okay, I'm gonna actually <laughs> say the most. I'm actually gonna say something that I think would make my life a lot easier in the trade. GCs. Can I get wow. a drum roll? Can I get a drum roll? Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> LSLs. <laughs> They're called LSLs. Dum, Two dum, by fours. Dum. <laughs> <laughs> you know no, what? Seriously, You're that, totally fucking right. We is, were just talking to Tony how every pocket door should re should require an LSL. Anything. And you know what? Every shower yeah, should be an LSL. How hard is it? Every single how shower hard is it? should be. Doesn't matter if it's a, if it's in the corner of an exterior walls. It should all be LSL in the shower. I, I completely agree. I don't care how and good of a framer you are. You use. I completely why agree. Why don't, why don't you guys tell me exactly what that means? An LSL is engineered. Oh, yeah. An engineered stud. Hundred percent level. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent level. Yeah, and I agree Sweet. that that should be code. Yeah. Get rid of the fucking ESA and that cold bullshit with the Detroit heat wire and put that into the code book. Good stuff. I would agree with that one, man. Hundred um, percent. Here's a really big one. We've all had this problem. I know you and me have. We've worked together a few times. You helped me out for free many times. Taught me some really cool shit. Are you gonna make but, him cry? No. But one of the <laughs> things, the one of the things you and me have always had a problem with. Manny has also. I'm just kind of talking yeah. to you directly What's he right now. What's talking about, man? I don't know. Either. What are you looking for in an employee, and what kind of attitude should employees have Ooh. when they do get hired by you? Listen, I've had endless amounts of people run through the company with me trying testing them out the only thing what makes them fail why is the it fault? Working, honestly man? it's like they're robots you got to tell them what to do they don't want to think they don't overthink to get things done before you ask them to do it and how do you keep them <sighs> what's the trick to keep really people? honestly if you if you show that you're learning and you're actually doing without me saying i mean there's a lot of things that they can do i mean i just really haven't come across give me, give me one or two the perfect employee yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what it is employees should be like playing chess just anticipate the movements man okay so that's one thing i learned in the film business is that we always knew if you set up a light here we knew what was going to be the next step so if you're on a construction site and you come in and you're a tile setter you know what the first step is and you should know what the second third fourth so anticipate the movements that's a smart employee if you don't anticipate the movements, then you don't give a shit about being yeah. there. And it's just a paycheck to you. And if that's a paycheck to you, then guess what? This friendship is not going to last. My theory is if you're hired by someone, treat that person's business like it's your own. That's but but actually, I, I want to contradict that never. by saying, don't treat it like your own. Treat it like it's theirs, but with the love of that it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> They, they won't do because that. The because the truth is, is when someone hires any one of us, they're never hiring it, hiring us for the three ways we do it. They're hiring us for the one way. If someone hires me, they don't want my guy's way or your way or your way. They want it my way. And that's important as an employee. You need to remember not your way, 
my way. Sorry. There's always that, two ways to doing things. Yeah. My way and my way pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to uh, uh, debunk that about the, the employees, right? The problem that they'll never look at his or mine or yours as it's their own and they're contributing to it is because in the back of their head, they're thinking you're making pure cake. You're making pure cake. I'm making pure cake. I'm making a lot of money and I'm only paying you X amount. Okay. That's I want de- to debunk yeah. that now. Go ahead, okay. debunk it. I want to say that if you're my employee, you're costing me a lot of money. I'm not making any money, and you're causing me a lot of headaches because I got to keep looking at your work instead of doing mine. It's very simple. If I hire somebody to do a job and I got to pull out the tools to do that job, then I didn't hire somebody to do that job. But there are good guys out there. Listen, I'm not there I'm not is. talking about the good guys out there or the guys that actually make a difference in someone's business. I'm just trying to bring it to light that when you're working for someone, you got to make the money. And you got to be on the team, the same team. How much did Instagram change your life? Because, dude, I I watched you go from like a couple followers to an amazing amount, but your videos were unbelievable. Yeah, you no, were pulling it, it off crazy stuff. It completely flipped my. How did that change around. your life, man? It flipped my business around 100. Um, percent Well, there's a lot of celebrities out there, though. You're a celebrity, but you got a lot oh, of views. No, 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 no. Wanna no. be celebrities? No, no, no. Yeah, there's no. I'm saying he, I, I look at his videos, and some of them have two, three hundred thousand, half a million. Honestly, with with Instagram, it all started off with I just wanted a portfolio where I could direct customers to, right? I put some jobs on there, and that's it. But I posted one video of me doing a shower pen and then it just exploded. It just went well, out of nowhere. I didn't know people are actually wanting to watch this. But did stuff, that right? change your business? It changed my business. 100%, wow. Yeah. Nine, I would say about 90% of my business comes through Instagram. So wow. I'm going to, this is going to be like a three part. First of all, I want to say that Matt, if you call him and you ask him, he could put some really cool videos on that he's hiding of yeah. us, playing at the job site, laying <laughs> dials. <laughs> I've got it all, man. I've he's got, got me uh, blackmailed. Um, <laughs> but what's your handle, brother? Give us, uh, someone wants to uh, give Instagram you a call. Instagram tag is MMC Tiles, Inc. Phone number 416-564-2249. One more time. 564-2249. Two two four nine. Yeah. In the what? Four In one the six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I wanted to ask you. Uh, okay, we can whenever it's ready. But <laughs> where do you like to shop even. for tile? Where is your go-to place? This is personal preference. Where do you like to go? Tile. I have two places. One Rivalda, and then the other one Centura. Do you ever go to Seattle? I love Seattle. I honestly wish more of my customers went there, but I just don't have any connections there. Where do you go get your all your tile tools and everything? Like that? Everything's from Centura and then Tool Academy. Yeah, I love this Tool Academy. Tool man. Academy is amazing. Yeah, yeah, you've been dragging me there a couple of times. Yeah, he's amazing. You really? Why didn't you know about it, man? I knew about it, but you know what? You kind of get stuck doing your own thing and then you forget and then someone takes you back and you're like, hey, I was here a long yeah, time yeah, yeah. ago. Oh, I got one more, more important question. You pick up truck or a van? I started off in a van. I'm now using a pickup. But you have a van. No, I got rid of it. Oh, you did? I hated that thing. Dun, wow. dun, dun. Hated dun, it. Dun, dun. Hated it. But how do you fit all your tools in the back of the truck? Honestly, I lose no space. I didn't use most of the space in my van. In really? the back. Yeah, I mean, most of my tools get left on site. I mean, really, all I'm carrying around is cement. The truth is, it doesn't matter what anyone uses as long as it works for them. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. Is that cash- like toilet paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's it, man. No, is that it? You, you have anything you want to say? Offer no, good than, stories? No, other than thank you guys for what do you mean? Good Come on, give me one nasty story. He's looking story. for trash. Kind of one, nas- he's looking for one trash. Dirty, nasty story <sighs> about someone left you hanging. You, you don't know have my to wife say who is going to be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of story. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Is there anything you want to ask? A bad story someone left you hanging or never paid you or. I can name like a thousand stories of people not. You know, like me. the freaks out there. Honestly, <laughs> and this okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll give you one story. I mean, and this is the worst kind of person that can possibly be on the planet. You know, oh. the people, the people that will act like they're your best friends throughout the whole project, and then when it gets to the end of the project, Judas. Judas. Okay. Yeah. So I did this amazing fireplace, wrapped everything nicely. I'm sure you've seen it before. Just the one, just recently. No, no, this oh, was a while okay, ago. This okay. was like two years ago. It came time to the guy to pay. I mean, the thing was perfect. I spent two and a half weeks on it, on one fireplace. It was insane. Slabs? It was uh, four by two porcelain tiles, micro crystal. So they were really, really hard to cut. I don't cut. remember this one. 
Yeah, it was glass plated. So, I mean, it took 10 times longer to buff, 10 times yeah. longer to polish. So I came to the end of the pay. And this is when I didn't have a, a contract with this guy. Team coming to pay, he basically just told me to go fuck myself. Homeowner. But you've done work for him Homeowner before. Homeowner construction. No, first time. GC's first time. First time. First time. He, was, I, he was so nice to me. He gave me food. He gave me drinks. He, he did everything. And then when it came time to pay, this is his words. You can go fuck yourself. I don't like it. And that's exactly what he said. He said, you can go fuck yourself. You know what? I don't uh, like it. You know what, Matty? Um, and I actually took a lot of pride on that job, man. That was like, that was, that is that was horrible, a masterpiece, dude. man. Masterpiece. This shit happens all the time, dude. I, and it sc- pisses me off. I, I wish I almost never asked for that story. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it um, pisses me but, off. But man. the truth is, is that you know people hear me talking about contractors, and I'm just really trying to better the attitude. And it's, it sounds like it's I'm negative. How do you go around tippy toeing around problems that people aren't paying attention to unless you make a point of it? Really, our biggest problem is dealing with the homeowners. Yeah. At the end of it all, they're the ones really making bad contractors yeah. if the homeowners at home would appreciate and treat contractors I'm not gonna better, blame the homeowners completely no i'm, I'm not I'm either gonna blame contractors there's a big chunk that, of that, that are being feeding homeowners. they're feeding into that well listen even regarding that story i just told you like half of it is my fault i should have had a formal contract with yeah. this guy written out everything done clean so what crystal. was the reason why you just he said he didn't like it Oh, what was the reason I didn't that have, he a didn't have a contract? Yeah. Well, it was a smaller job, right? And he just looked like a great person, man. Like I didn't have to worry about it. And I'm usually a good judge of character. Not this time. That one slipped way past my head. That sucks. Yeah, Carlito's got a great hard. solution for taking care of those situations. I know he does. It's, it's not the <laughs> bum, best. Bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> But the, unfortunately, it's not, not 1970s anymore. Yeah, I know. No, but if you watch the, Ir- uh, the Irishman. <laughs> uh, okay. On hey, that note. Hey, Juicy Fruit, take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Matt. Thanks very much, man. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, having it's me. been Thank great you. having you on the show, man. We love bringing in honest trades guys coming in here that actually are passionate, especially a young one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That it really cares about the business. Oh, man. I what? just want to talk. How do you feel about the, the millennials and the old guys? Anything real fast? <laughs> uh, oh, that's a loaded question. I'm, I'm having a lot of... like. I've he's been a millennial. A of, I know, but he's a different a different type. He's yeah. not a stereotype. True, true. Millennial. I mean, and he's having problems with them. Quick and easy. I mean, old timers get used to the new products. Millennials, stop being lazy. That's it. That's, wow. that's pretty much fucking it. And on it. that note... <laughs> thanks matt really appreciate it man thanks boys thank you so much this has been an interesting talk about tile (laughs) it's a 416 baby in the t dot yeah till next time